Okay. Good evening, everyone. So welcome to the HHRM uh, Asia session on Mastermind. I am not sure if every one of you is aware what a Mastermind session is. Basically, and actually my name is Rita Choi, founder of HHRM. I think I'm not a stranger to most of you. And in a Mastermind session, actually uh, we, we have a group of like-minded people sitting together to discuss on a common topic. And the, for the topic today is leadership. I'm pretty sure that uh, all of you are familiar with leadership, right? And especially we are all from the human resources field. And a lot of people says that um, everything rises and falls on leadership. So we can see the importance of, a, of being a leader in an organization. And it can be, if, we are, we are good, if the leader is good, it can be a turnaround of the business for the company. So for the session today, we are going to to give you a briefing of the regional survey report findings. And uh, today we are focusing on the section of leadership since the topic for today is leadership. And then after that, we have a small team discussions and we have prepared a few topics related to leadership so that each of the team will discuss among themselves. And then after the discussion, we will have the team representative to, to do a recap on the, on the team, on the, what the team has discussed and then report it in the big group, okay? So that's why we have the session, we have, later we have the summary of the team discussion, and then after that, we'll wrap up the whole discussion for today. Okay. So right now, I would like to share with you on the survey, the original survey result on the, on the survey that we took in quarter three. And in that survey, actually we, we were, basically we're looking into the, uh, the future of human resources in the next 12 months. And in one of the sections, we, we, we asked a few questions related to leadership. And here are the findings for the, for the for one of the questions there. In one of the question, qualities that a leader should possess to overcome business challenges. And here you can see the findings. Basically 26% of the participants mentioned that the most important qualities of a leader is honesty and integrity. Okay, and for me, I kind of agree with that more because I think integrity is very important. If, if a leader doesn't have it, we don't really think the leader really deserves to be a leader. And then the second, the, the second quality is decision making capabilities. And the third one was inspiring others. So instead of giving out con, uh, instructions, um, employees rather love leaders, inspire them so that they, they will follow what the, what the leaders has told them to do. And then another quality is commitment and passion. The last one was delegation and emp empowerment. Of course, we also have some other qualities such as uh, being a good community communicator, being accountable, empathetic, and have confidence. Okay, so these, these are the qualities that we captured from that survey that we conducted in Q3 last year. And the next one related to leadership is behavior of a leader to lead, organize, to lead the organization, overcoming business challenges. So we can see the behavior of the leaders that, uh, that we consider would help us to overcome challenges. And the first one on the top list was be proactive. And the other behaviors were looking for opportunities to collaborate, be creative, be resilient, and retain objectivity. Of course, we also have other behaviors such as facing uh, uh, conflict squarely and also reaching out for help. So these are the behavior that, uh, that were identified by the participants in the surveys for a leader to lead the organizations overcoming business challenges. And the last one that we are going to share with you is the leadership behavior that, that hampers business growth. That is the other side, right? And the first one on the top list was unethical. So we don't, we, we, of course we want the leader to be ethical, right? And then the second one was aggressive attitude. On that one, some, some people just think it differently. And then dishonesty, abrasive language, harassment, 
racism, timid, and other factors and other behaviors as well. So these were these are the behavior that we identified in these surveys that we conducted last year in Q Street. Okay, so any questions so far before we move on to the, uh, the small team discussions? Just feel free to mute yourself. There's no questions. Okay. So we have, let me see. So since we have 14 people, right? So we, we are going to divide ourselves into three groups, okay? And then the first group is for Tony, okay? So Tony, your question for first group is, what in your opinion are the three top leadership qualities that every leader should consciously process? Okay. Can you please repeat what, what's the question? Uh, sure, Quality. Sure. What in your opinion are the, okay, let me type it here. What in your opinion are the three leadership qualities that every leader should okay three top leadership qualities that each leader should process got it got it okay and second question for dr sona your team okay okay Do you agree that someone having the top three qualities would essentially be a good leader can you show me the screen the question Okay, basically it's already on the platform. I'll show it again. So this is for Dr. Shona's team. Oops. Okay, so do you agree that someone having the top three qualities that we just share would essentially be a good leader. Can you share any stories from your experience? Can you please uh, show me the screen? It's not, I'm mean, not uh, seeing the question. No, I know, I know, I know. I know nah. But I can't do it because if I say that, it will be a good nah. Let me share this. So are you able to copy the question and put it on the chat so that we all can see it? Yes, yes, I've already done that. Yeah, I believe Rita, Rita typed at the chat, chat the chat conversation. Please refer that. Yes, that's right. Yep. Hang on now. And this is number one, question number one. Okay. And then here comes question number three. Okay, I'll be I'll be sharing this topic with uh, number three. Okay, so let me assign the groups now. There will be. Okay. And then I Yeah. 
persona have I assigned you? Yet, right? Not yet, right? Okay. And then I have one, two, three, two, four, seven, two, three, two, two, three. Okay. So, Mr. Yos. One. Two, three. And I will join.
Uh, Rita, you're mute. Let me see. Hello, we cannot hear you, please. Okay, welcome back. Can you hear me? No, no, we can hear you, please. Okay. Yes, hearing you. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have three groups, right? So let's have group one to give them, give us a summary of the discussion in one, okay? And then after that, we'll invite questions from the floor. And who is the leader of team one? Tony, who is the one who's going to, to present the summary of the discussion? Cecilia would be the one. Ah, my good friend Cecilia. Ladies first. Yeah, Cecilia. Cecilia, can you tell us a question? Your, your summary? Okay. Um, the question um, is about uh, what the top characters the good leader should possess, the top three. And uh, um, we have the four team members. And uh, um, Tony, uh, he's uh, doing the business for more than 20 years. And now he is a business supporter, involved uh, involved the business more. And the same, uh, same story, Eddie, and he worked for Singapore. And now he's also the kind of the business supporter. And uh, Jacko, uh, he's um, HR practitioner, and he worked for um, HR for the many years. Um, Cecilia, okay. Um, because the question is about the top three characters the leader should possess, and thank you our team members. The contribution they mentioned a lot of um, characters. I think they all are right because the every um, the characters is uh, um is good for the leader to possess to perform the leadership. But I think I just general. Um, share the information we just discussed and we we shared something um the first one we like to share with you is ethics um which our team say think the ethics is the top one the reason is if you are um belong to, uh, if you possess the ethics so that's why you are honest to not to yourself but to the to the business to the people work with you or for you. Um, and on the other hand, you're clear to set a clear standard to, um, to make things equality. Equality or fairness in business is very, very important to perform the business. And the second one I like to share is what to talk is honest, similar like the ethics, mm. because um, not to the, people but have to the business to the mission and the vision and uh, you have to make the transparent policy and uh, open policy and um, share the message clearly and get the message um, to clearly or um, how do you say that um, you have to get if you are honest so that's why the, um, if you said the like the staff benefits other people will trust you and suit that and make the businesses sustainable. And uh, we also share the other characters, for example, the problem solving or emotional intelligence and uh, um, influence. Because we think if you are a good communicator and a good messenger, um, uh, um, communicate, and then you will clearly um, convey the message to your people. And another one um, we shared is about the passion, because if you lack of the passion and for a leader, especially for a leader, which means you will not can make the things happen. And the, the, the automotive fair leader is different from the boss, is a different from the, um, the supervisor. And you have to not, Im not control the job that you have to control the emotion and make the order happy and make them the automatically or initiatively to do the things for the job for the mission not for you and you just you know you have to possess the passion 
And this is all our team just discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Anything to add on from the team? Anything to add on? Yeah, actually, she, okay, Mr. Eddie, would you like to add, Mr. Eddie? Actually, Cecilia, okay. just, uh, actually, she covered all the points very well. Thank you, Cecilia. Yeah. All the main points we discussed were included there. Thank you. And in, in Cecilia's summary, she mentioned about the difference between a boss and a leader, right? What do you think? Do you think they should be the same? A boss is uh, actually the same as a leader. What do you think? It's different, to be honest. Because for me, the leader should be the influencer and not just like the boss. And uh, every day you have to, to make the lecture comments and push your people to do so. But the influencer or leader just make your goal ahead of you and the people will do it by themselves. That is a leader. So the character or the, some, the, some of the things that is big different. Mm, I see. Yeah, thank you. Actually, just to add, a leader must be a good follower as well. Huh? He I must know. be a good exemplar mm. towards his team members. No, so, so he must be a good follower. Thank you. Mm, I see. So Max, you want to say something? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, my, my question is, isn't honesty and integrity a universal value that is being taught in almost all the culture, religion, that each and every single individual living in, on, in this world should possess. And why we are saying that leaders must have this? Isn't that a DNA that he must already have it as a human being at the very least? Uh, Max, uh, maybe let me answer your question. I, I, I think that this is ideal, but this is not something that is being practiced by every human being or even practiced by every CEO. Because if that is true, then why are we having a lot of governance issues? So as much as we like it to be a given, it is not true that it's a given. Same thing like example, just now uh, Rita asked the question about boss and, uh, and leader. A boss can be a leader, a boss may not be a leader. And a leader may be a boss, a leader may not be a boss. So they are two separate roles. Uh, it really depends on whether a person who is a boss wants to be a leader or not. It is a, it's a deliberate, to me, I feel that it's a deliberate decision that every one of us wants to be ethical. And uh, just now I share uh, in the team about ethics because I find that, especially in the recent time, uh, right now, there are so many issues that we are facing. So uh, we need the leader to be ethical because it is good for the business, it is good for the employee, and it's also good for the society. So uh, a lot of people think that uh, it's a given. First of all, I don't think it's a given. I think it's a deliberate choice that the, the, the organization, the CEO, the leader need to take a position to be very clear to the business partners, to their own employees, and also to the society at large. I mean, this is my comment, my view. Thank you, thank you. Um, definitely, I fully agree with you. Uh, well, there's a reason why I asked that question. Because today we are talking about top, t top three leadership quality that every leader should consciously possess. I would rather say whether he consciously possess, I think leaders should consciously demonstrate these qualities. That's the reason why I asked the question. Because yes, it is given that everybody should have this leadership, should have this uh, integrity and honesty. That, that is basic, that is fundamental of being a human being. But today is either people forgotten about it or people consciously forgetting about it. Okay, so that's the reason, yes, he may have the, all this quality in him, 
but he decided to suppress it because of personal agenda that we are seeing in many countries, many organizations. So uh, that's not, that's not, not provoking question. Asking the questions, but at the same time, I think that some people may not even possess it. I mean, that's why I say that it's an ideal. That means we hope that every human being, uh, being a perfect human being, will possess that. But human being, being human being that is not perfect, may not all possess that. So some of them may not even possess that. If they don't even possess that, they cannot even demonstrate. So uh, I, I, I kind of understand what you mean by uh, the, the way that we phrase the question. But I think that uh, before we even talk about demonstrating, first of all, do the person even possess it? And I feel, in my opinion, I feel that not all leaders possess that. And sometimes even I talk about EQ, it's not something that everyone are born with good EQ, but mm -hmm. EQ can be taught. EQ can be acquired. So uh, to, to me is that before they can acquire, uh, meaning that before they can possess it, they need to go and learn it and they possess it, then they can demonstrate it. Hello, can I yeah. add something please? Hello. Sure, sure. Yeah, Actually, sure. you see, personally, I have trained so many managers. Now some are taking you know, the general manager's rules as well in some of the hotels as well as in other industry. Based on my experience, what I like to share is, you know, we cannot predict how people would react. Although we may be giving them, you know, all the management skills, you know, we don't know how they would be, you know, behaving or how they would be, you know, reacting in terms of their management. Because it is, you know, personal choice, you know, how they would be acting. So just we also talk about walk the talk. We, we have to speak more honestly and what we have to stick to what we are saying. Thank you. Okay. Very Thank good. you. So walk the talk, you are, you are also agreeing with me that he has to demonstrate it. Can, can I say something? Yeah, Marie, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I'm late. Okay, so uh, I, I just heard about this uh, in the conversation because I just uh, log in uh, about leadership, so integrity and honesty. Actually, just want to share that integrity and honesty is also part of our core values okay, in our company. And this is uh, integrity and honesty are expected that all individuals would uphold to these values especially the leader. Why? Because if the leader doesn't possess this kind of um, values, then he, sh he cannot be a leader, right? Because why? You need people to trust you. And people would trust a person who has integrity and honesty. So if you're a dishonest person, you don't have integrity, then people wouldn't believe you, right? And people would not uh, follow your example. So... Uh, honesty and integrity is a foundation for people to, to, to trust and to believe that person is worth, uh, worth following. Mm, that is very true. Yeah, I also agree with uh, Miss Mary. I also agree with Miss Mary as integrity and honesty is very, very important and very top much quality of leader. Because if the leader is honest, the other subordinate can also follow the same path. Maybe so just, we can say it's a very, very. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shama. Yeah. So I can add upon that. that uh, yeah, so, so that's why I can, uh, and in our group also, we discussed a lot in that particular integrity and honesty. It's a fundamental, you can say, a core value for any human being, be, uh, especially for a leader. And others can also follow the same path. They, if this quality inspires the other subordinate also to follow the path. Yeah, just, just a, um, I can share with you the survey results of other countries. I can tell you that uh, integrity and honesty actually was the top quality of the leader in all the countries' report. So as Max mentioned, right, it's something universal, but it doesn't come, 
come with the fact that uh, everybody is is of integrity. Uh, Rita, can yeah. I can I check with you? Do uh, have you conducted a survey to see a correlation between ethics and ROI? Because the, the reason why, uh, I mean, the, the business profitability, the reason why I ask the question is, yeah. uh, we do see a lot of business are doing well, but they may not be ethical. Uh, I don't see anybody from Korea here. So like example, Samsung. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is one very good example that the, uh, the, the CEO or, or the chairman is put to jail because of ethical issue. So mm. they are still very profitable. But uh, I mean, as much as we say that we, we like our leader uh, to be ethical, but is it necessary tied to the profitability of the business? I'm just curious about that. The, the, one of the reasons why I asked the question is because I was a HR practitioner uh, making a business decision. And I find that a lot of time HR people, when we want to do certain things, we face challenges from the business because we're not able to to draw the link between what we want to do with the ROI, because a lot of times they think that we HR people, we are a cost center. We are not a profit center. But if I'm able to draw a correlation to what I'm doing, to the profitability of the business, I tell you that the business will sit down and listen to me. So like example, if I want to hire somebody, I will tell the business that, look, if you do not hire the person, how is it going to affect the productivity of the organization, which also means that it's going to impact on the revenue of the business. But if I'm going to hire a person, how is it going to increase my productivity? And thus, it will increase my revenue. While it, even though it reduces my, uh, my expenses, my cost, but the thing is my revenue is definitely greater than my cost. So that's how my CEO will sit down and talk to me because ultimately I'm able to show that by making a certain HR decision, I'm actually helping the company make more money rather than losing money. Yeah, that is very true. Actually, I work for a boss from mainland China and he's very practical. When he hires someone, he has to make a calculation whether he will make a profit or run into a loss. So if you think that if we hire, especially a salesperson, even HR person, he, he, need, he need the person to be, uh, of course, we, we need to support the business, right? But at the same time, the, we also, he, he also needs an HR person to, to know how to calculate. Say for example, you hire this, this salesperson, would that, would that person really make a profit for the company? Or that if the company really hire the person, will we will, will lose it, lose some lose money on that person? So we all have to make this kind of calculation. We all we call it ROI, right? Yes. And uh, so I think it's very true, especially now in the pandemic, the situation is very difficult. They really count every dime, and uh, so as HR, we have to support the business. We have to go for what the boss wants, but he may not, as we mentioned earlier, right? It boss may not necessarily be a good leader, but this is the reality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree on that one. So HR are expected to be HR business partner, right? So we yeah. are now not a conventional HR as before, but now we are a business partner. We're also taking care of uh, the proper profitability of the business mm -hmm. through um, HR innovations, right? So yeah. I, I totally agree on that one, although it's quite difficult for, for, for like, for, yeah, if, if you're going to look at business perspective, I agree with, uh, with Eddie because we are a cost center. We don't make any profit. We are expense. Actually, I disagree that we are a cost center. I always tell my boss, I'm a profit center because yeah. I told them that if you force me, I will say that for every, uh, for every salary that I administer, I charge a fee. For every annual leave that people apply through my system, I charge a fee. Then I can be self-sustainable. So mm. this is how I actually do. For every training I conduct, I will charge the uh, the respective department because ultimately it is a cost to me. Yes. So the way that I need to generate revenue. So I am actually a very business or profit oriented kind of HR person. So that's the reason why none of my business leader in the past dare to challenge me on, on HR being a cost center because I tell them, look, I will make sure you pay me for my service. 
<laughs> and I'll make sure that you will come crying to me for having a good discount. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Before we are, they look at us as a discounts only, right? Now the new HR, the new HR model is we provide profit to the company. Hmm. Right? Yeah, but the thing is, how do we measure? How do we actually uh, 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 demonstrate to them that we're able to bring the profitability? So far, a lot of HR are unable. We only say that we want to do, uh, we want to implement HR MS system. Uh, and we say how good the system is, but we are not able to draw the ROI. And we are not able to speak the language of the marketing people. We are not able to speak the language of the operations people. We are not able to speak the language of finance people. So that's the reason why sometimes we face difficulty in getting the buy-in from the respective people because you only have one pitch, which is a HR pitch. But we need to deliver the pitch whereby the marketing people the finance people, the operations people, the CEOs need to, and we need to speak that language. So to the CEO, we need to speak about vision, how what we do will help in the vision of the CEO and the profitability of the organization. For the CFO, we need to talk about money. How are we going to ask for money and how are we going to generate more money? For marketing people, how are we going to do things and for the employee branding, for the organization branding and so forth? Because Everyone is always asking the question, what is in for me? If there is nothing in for me, they will not support it. Because there will be, for them to do the work, it means more work for them. So unless they understand that what is in for them and in for the organization, they will not support that. I mean, this is my experience as a CHRO for the region. So I do a lot of management uh, to, to my peers and I have to go and tell them, look, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring money. Then they will sit down and listen to me, and then I will start my pitch in the jargon. <laughs> wow, oh, good. you're a very good CHRO. But I believe that as HR, we don't bring revenue to the company directly because we are not the salespeople, but we will be able to get good people. Actually, Rita, I, I, I find that I disagree. I used to bring uh, business sales to the business because I do a lot of traveling. And when I was sitting beside me, I, I, that's one trip I went to Shenzhen. Okay, and the one sitting beside me was from Huawei, and we started to have a conversation. And I met, and he he was quite secretive. He told me that he was from marketing department, and when he exchanged the name card with me, he was the regional COO. And then I have his name card. I went back to my company. I go to my re my sub region. I say, look, I got this name card. Do you want to do business with him? If yes, am I going to get a commission? I say, you are giving commission to the salespeople. Are you going to give me commission? So my COO and my CEO say yes, but I say no, you don't give it to me, you give it to HR. Okay, you give it to HR and then this becomes my, my revenue. Okay, so I can do a lot of things. I don't have to now beg for money for benefits. I have this money. So moving forward, what I did is I told my HR people, I said, go out and network. Whatever you network, because HR is the easiest way to network and get business for our company. Because HR to HR, we talk. And then say, hey, you are in this industry. Do you want to, uh, I think that your business has made some sense to my business. Do you want to collaborate? And then you link up the business people together. But sometimes when the sales people meet up with sales people, that is a kind of, oh, you're trying to do business with me. I'm not, I don't really trust you. But HR yeah. people, we trust each other. Yeah, you're right. So I use this to the advantage of being a salesperson. I mean, I mean, I'm not paid to be a salesperson but I'm doing that grow. And that's the reason why I, 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 I say that I'm actually a very profit-driven person. Yeah, very true, very true. But let's move on to the to team two, okay? Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So team two, uh, Dr. Sona, what's the question and who is the representative for your team? <laughs> uh, uh, maybe Mr. Mehan? Oh, Max, okay. What is the question? What's the okay, topic? the question, do you agree that someone having these top three qualities would essentially be, the, be a good leader. Can you share any story from your experience? So we have gone through this, a lot of sharing just now within that few minutes. And first of all, the top uh, leadership quality um, is honesty and integrity. And obviously um, we have uh, covered that a lot just now, and I don't think we need to touch on that. Um, I will go straight to second leadership quality, which is decision making. Uh, 
this our team member actually gave a few examples, uh, particularly uh, being a captain of the ship of the or the plane, uh, who would have to constantly make good decision, being a forefront of the crews or the ship. Uh, so therefore, uh, in being a leader, either individually you're a leader for yourself, or you're a leader of a small group, a supervisor, or leader of an organization, then um, the decision making then, is then we crucial. Can, we, yeah. Then we have, yeah. been, yes, yes, yes. Yes, Okay. Then um, they have also uh, given example of uh, how leaders make decision during this pandemic COVID-19 period. Okay, are they able to collaborate and find new opportunity or how do they have um, foresight to, look, to have um, proper business continuity plan in the, to face any um, natural disaster or any unforeseen circumstances? Um, Dr. Shobna, you, you have anything to add on this point? Um, nothing. We have already covered that uh, the examples of ship and even uh, you know the uh, that when the aircraft on the cockpit, the pilot, he has to take the decision at the right time at the right directions and what to do at during the emergency, at whether to land or what to do. So we have covered all the examples related to decision making uh, for the good leader to become a good leader. All right. Thank you. Then I move on to the third. Uh, leadership quality that would make uh, him a good leader, okay, which is inspiring. Um, this is another good quality that we, we all agree that being a leader should be able to inspire others, okay, if he's in an organization, should be inspiring others to, um, uh, yeah, to achieve the common goal of the organization, the vision of the organization, okay. Um, the last thing you want is that you jump into a plane and then you hear the captain of the plane and s s tell you that hey, um, they all, you know, I'm sorry today, I'm not feeling well, but I was forced to take the plane today. Uh, hopefully we will reach a destination. So that is not inspiring at all. And uh, you, all you want to hear is that the, the captain said, we have a good weather, we will reach the destination, you know, uh, within these how many hours and all that. So those are kind of a clear direction and inspiration, uh, all right, to motivate others to, to reach a common goal. And these are the top three quality, we agree. That would make a, a person a leader, good leader, okay? Um, open for question and discussion. The next other question, how does it uh relate to the current situation. Would there be any difference in the qualities in good times and bad times? Yes, absolutely. Personally, I, I would look at a person, whether he's leader or not, on how he performed during hard time, how he performed under pressure. Because on, on a given normal circumstances, uh, almost everybody are able to perform. Okay, uh, if I, you know, people come to work, go back, uh, you know, normal circumstances. But if you give them pressure, look at them, how, how they perform. So that uh, proves the resilience of, of that, that person. And same goes to a leader. leader. So if a leader do, during hard time, how the leader perform? Will, will he shout and scream? Or will he be lost, okay, uh, in the middle of turbulence? Or would he be able to pull all the resources and look at the right direction and make a right decision to, to overcome the situation and then move on to come out from the troubled water? Or he will, he will get himself confused and do not know what to do and he'll drown in, in, in that turbulence. Hope that answers your question. Mm, I see. So if that's the case in, in the bad times, do you think the top three quality you just share with us still be the top three? Definitely, uh, definitely. If it, if it is a top for all the time, it is a, should be the top for, for during the, the trouble period. Yes, definitely. Mm. Uh, other, otherwise, I, 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 I think the ship will sink. That is our opinion. I see, I see. Any other com any other questions or comments from the from the floor before we move on to team three? 
Any questions? No questions. No questions? All very clear? Okay, okay. No. Okay, let's very clear. Okay, team three, Victor, can you tell us the question? Hi everyone. So for team three, the question is uh, being a leader and having leadership qualities, are these the same? So in terms of all the our team, you know, we have summarized pretty much and anybody can be a leader. And Rita has also shared the five levels of leadership by John Maxwell itself. Whether it is a leader who leads because they have to, you know, based on a title, uh, based on their designation, or a leader who leads because they want to through relationships, a leader who leads because of what they have done for the organization through positive results, a leader who leads because of what um, they will development of the people, you know, a people development, and of course the last one, people who leads because out of respect, people who follow the leader out of respect of who the leader is and what the leader represents. So in our summary, anyone can be a leader, you know, and through question uh, team one onwards, you know, we have also seen that there's actually a lot of qualities that a leader must have, whether it's ethics, work the talk, passion, or even what uh, Rita has shown earlier, whether is it um, honesty, integrity, decision-making capabilities, inspiring others. There's actually a lot of different qualities that a leader should have. And it really depends on at what level of an employee sees the leader, right? because it's very different from their perspective. But what we do uh, agree on as well is the quality of the, uh, the quality of the leaders, you know, differentiate what is a good leader and a leader that can be improved further, right? Mm. So we, we may say a lot of um, qualities that we have mentioned just now, but it really depends on uh, how good the extent of the quality is that defines how great this leader is. So, so that is our, our summary. Yes, that's, that's all for us. Thank you, Victor. Any questions that you would like Victor to answer? Any questions in regards to his sharing? No, then here comes the last session because I just came up with this session. I think that would be that would be interesting. Any stories that you can share with us to to illustrate that you that person is a good leader or not? Have you come across with a great leader in your life? You'd like to share with us? Any great leader that you have come across in your career life or even in your private life that you would like to share with us? Why you think that person is really good? Anybody would like share to like to share with us? Mr. Yo, you like to share with us? Any great great leader in your mind? Yes, I have a so-called I have a work with a leader. I mean, it is unique that actually he's a role model for the fact that um, during the crisis, economic crisis, so they have a lot of so-called. Uh, cost reductions, uh, redundancy, and so on and so forth, making redundancy in people. One of the things that because of old head and things like that. Um, now, a leaders of him as a head of the regions, there's a lot of entitlements that actually you can have. Uh, he was all, he's just coming here and do that. But he showed example that because of the constraint of the cost, the running cost of operations in the region itself, as a regional office itself, he did not come here and say, as a leader here, I'm entitled for a car that was $250,000. He bought himself a Japanese car that aligned with all the staff saying that we are all in together. And that's how you build a lot of trust and then how you make so-called the um, organization citizenship behavior, the change our mindset about this is how a leader should be. And then we behave differently, we contribute differently into the organization. We take the organization as a pride that we run with it and then we survive through a crisis. I think that is a very unique role models that people can see. And entitlements or self-serving leadership is often you see that it has happened to a top leadership. And this individual, he is entitled for it, but he did not do it. He, he knows that he has shown and shown a good model, role group model, the rest, of, the rest of the staff are following him. True enough, the company turned around, we make so much money within that quarter. And the company turned around, we did not suffer through a lot, but we made a lot of money. Mm. And that is why I see, a role model is very, very crucial. It's just no point to go around and chop everybody's salary and then you get yourself a big car and under uh, paid by company. And there's something that is it's practically not logical at all. You really discourage the spirits of the team. Wow, very good sharing. Wow. 
Anybody would like to share some of the great leader story? Anybody would like to share some of the great leader stories? Yes, can I? Sure, sure. Go ahead. You see, in 1997, as you may know, there were Asian financial crises. As a result, you see, in the hotel where I had been working as the HR manager, more than 50% were you know, having problems because of redundancy. No, I would highlight the general manager of that at the time. He was a role model who fought for the staff with the senior management, you know, not to go ahead and to take the pain for some time, but the senior management didn't listen to him and in, he had no choice. And we had five redundancies and you know, about 200 staff members were reduced because of the financial crisis in 1998. Unfortunately, you know, one night a staff member threw a stone to the room of the general. Yeah. You know, he he was you know emotionally hurt because you see, because of the stone, you know, the window was broken, the window was, you know, a glass window. So it was broken and the general manager, he put up the resignation and he just went to his country. All the staff members who were remaining were really sorry for him because he was a real role model for us. Mm. Thank you. Wow, I think good. you got it. <laughs> Any other stories? Uh, I, Rita, I don't, I don't have a story, but I thought I, I have a small opinion, observation, probably I can put up for discussion. Sure. Um, I, I, I have not seen, probably to, to the best of my memory, I have not seen a leader uh, who, who possesses um, all the quality of a leader, leadership, okay, of a leader. Um, if he's he, if he's a very visionary, he's very aggressive. Okay, mm -hmm. if he's uh, he, he's focusing on uh, integrity and honesty, and um, so so he like or drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen some uh, who is very good in in management but lack of business equipment. Uh, so uh, I, I just want to ask everybody whether you have the same similar observation as I am, or, or I'm just. Maybe probably I didn't observe it well. Probably no. Uh, correct. Yeah. This is correct. Yeah, this is very much correct. What Mr. Mahan described that we are not finding all the three qualities in one leader itself. Somewhere, some lacking is there in addition to one another. Yeah, very true. It depends on what so you we also have. Uh, yes, yes. The so, same experience we also have. Yeah. So, uh, Please carry on. Uh, yeah, Please. I, I think that uh, we should be looking at a team rather than just a, an individual person. In the past, we always look towards a person, uh, but the fact of life is that we will never have the ideal person. So the, the closest to what we want to achieve is to have a team that uh, everybody are able to contribute to complement each other. I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, okay. uh, I, I previously, uh, the, uh, just as I mentioned, I used to work for a French company. So the, the CEO, the regional CEO who hires me, I can tell you that uh, he has very good EQ. He's able to memorize by heart all my 24 countries, MD, CFO, and HR, and marketing and salesperson. History, work history. So 24 times three, or 24 times four. He actually, uh, on my way to India, he was sit uh, I was sitting beside him. He spent two and a half hours going through by memory about that, uh, that work history. I was so impressed. 
because that is how much he actually take the time to understand and to remember everybody's employment history. And the next thing is that I can tell you that he is a very stingy boss, but I can tell you that everybody are very convinced with him because he is also equally stingy to himself. So he's very fair to people and to himself. And he's very fair. And as much as he is very stingy, a lot of the people actually follow him for the past 15, 20, 25, 30 years. So, I, I mean, I'm super impressed with this boss. And uh, even though he's a French, he start, he's probably the first person in the office and the last person leaving the office. Because a lot of times they say the French are the lazy people. I mean, sorry. I mean, we always think so. But the fact is that he is the most hardworking uh, being in the office. Yeah, Sorry see. to interject, Eddie. I think you brought in very interesting uh, perspective where you know we, we should look at a team rather than an individual, uh, whether they have all these qualities. What about uh, a CEO? He, he's standalone, so he's uh, the top leader of the organization. And uh, how do we then, um, uh, uh, what, what can be our expectation if an individual cannot have all the all the same, all those qualities, and uh, he, uh, should we look at him as well as his team, top leader team like uh, Exco or, or no? That that is what you're trying to say. Yeah. So to me, my opinion is that I will probably look at the leader himself and also the team of leadership, and also uh, I beg to defer where we are able to expect a consistent uh, 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 attributes throughout uh, the whole organization because we, we have good times and bad times. We have different strategy. So different strategy will require to have a certain uh, attribute stronger at a period of time. But I would say that if we expect a leader to have, uh, uh, to have a lead, unless a leader lives forever, which is impossible, then we should not be looking at one leader having, uh, uh, having one leader. We should be looking at having a team of people coming on board so that the, the attributes of leadership can be consistent in the whole organization. Mm, nice. Thanks for sharing. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, coming back to coming back to this so-called corporate um, leadership itself. Uh, okay, you might have a CEO, COO, and stuff like that. Uh, bear in mind that there is a so-called executive management teams that next to them. The executive management teams are actually running a day to day uh, operation itself, and their opinions actually feedback upwards to the CEO and COOs. And the decision itself is a, is a so-called joint decision. It's not an individual decision. But certain things that the CEO and CEO has to make decisions after a big sum of money. Expenses itself, they tend to do that. Also changing a policy is a tend to do that. The rest of the things that in terms of business running itself, they tend to take in the feedback from executive management that is running below, below them. So executive management depend on, on, depend on the regions that you have. It can be six or seven, depending on the size of the organization. But the feedback has to go upward to the CEO or COO to make some decision, but not all the decision, but it's all joint decision. And depends on regional culture, regional requirement, tends to be customized in certain degrees, but not 100%, but customized in certain degrees, subjects to the needs of the engagement. That is the experience I have. Yeah, very true. Actually, I would just want to comment on uh, Max's question about uh, being a leader who, who will not process all kinds of qualities. And, uh, and Max, you know that um, in our book club, right, recently we have finished a book called Talent Delusion. In that book, it talks about uh, Steve Jobs. Actually, everybody agreed with me that Steve Jobs was visionary, right? But a lot of people also know that he was very difficult to work with. So was he a good leader? <laughs> okay. So anyway, so he's an, interest, he's an interesting person as well. So he was an interesting person. Anyway, so any other comments from the, from the group? Dr. Lu, you are, we are quiet today. Would you like to, say, to share with us something? Yeah, okay. I'm enjoying Eddie's talk so much <laughs> and the rest speaker's talk. I think very relevant, la. I think, um, um, my personal experience, um, during good times, you know, their leaders say, oh, this is our cake, our cake. When times are bad, this is my cake. Mm -hmm. I think, um, um, I can't conclude, you know, you know, but you know, I, I've seen the best, I've seen the worst, but you can see the true colors during this pandemic uh, uh, impact, yeah? And then you can see how individual leaders uh, play their role, you know? 
then you can see, you know, a person may just change so, dr so drastically, you know, just because, you know, probably to safeguard his, his career or jobs and any other factors, things, you know. So, so I think this is a good lesson to us to really evaluate, you know, what are the quality, is this, are these qualities sustainable or not, you know. So, you know, the, the, the competency, the quality may shift, you know, in different situations. So, yeah, it's a, it's, 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 it's a process of learning, you know, so yeah, we just hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. So are there any other comments? From okay, that? I share something very interesting. Last time when I was uh, doing the HR, I traveled a lot to China and mm -hmm. I love to play Mahjong. So for those of you, uh, uh, Mahjong is a Chinese game. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of gambling with some many involved. I love to play and I, at my HR people actually organize game every time I go to the city. And I deliberately play with them because I want to see how they behave when it talks about money and it talks about strategy and all this. And I can tell you that it's a very interesting observation. And by the way, uh, if you uh, follow what happened in, uh, in Japan, there are some companies actually before they place a candidate in the organization, they actually get them to play the Japanese mahjong. Okay, it's actually part of the assessment as well, because they want to see whether that they are able to take the stress and are they tempted and how do they behave? Are they unscrupulous or are they scheming people or how, how do they behave or are they able to take the stress? So this is one of the very interesting examples that I've tried before. Wow, very interesting. Okay, before we, we close the session today, may we take a pic group picture? So can everybody show their face? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Everybody, please. Danny. <laughs> Mr. Richman, and also, yeah. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, so um i would like to have the to thank for the representative every one of you for attending session today for all the uh representative who represented your team to to give a summary of the discussion can you please pass the notes to me so that i can put together a put together a file and send it to all the participants okay so th thanks max and victor and also who else what is uh, Cecilia, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you sent us a photo as well, right? Yeah, photo, yeah. The photo will be included in the in the file. No worries. Okay. So so let's uh okay, so that's all for tonight and hope everybody Thank enjoyed you. tonight. Okay, so thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 B